In this video, we're going to look at the anonymized screen area functionality of SAP Enable Now. This has been around for several years, but it's had a few enhancements recently that we'll look into as well. So the functionality in essence allows you to anonymize or mask out certain areas of the screens that have been captured during the recording of a simulation. Why you might want to do this is if there's sensitive data in there, for example, pricing information, credit information for customers or vendors, or HR data for employees or stuff like that. Basically things that were captured during recording, but you don't really want your learners to see. So I have a simple simulation here that I'm going to use as an example, and I'll start off on this screen here. Now there's information on a couple of tiles down on the bottom right here for cash discount utilization and cash discount forecast. Let's say I don't want those KPIs to be displayed during training because it's maybe sensitive information or I just don't want users to see that. So I want to remove that information. Now I could just edit the screenshot and blank it out, but the anonymized screen area functionality is much more effective for doing that. So with the screen selected, I'm going to go to this anonymize screen area button at the top of the property sheet. This is the one that looks like a little bandit mask. And if I click on that, that gives me a dialog box here called anonymize screen area, and it has a red bordered area on it. This is the area that will be anonymized. It remembers where you were last. So this is the last thing I did was anonymized somewhere around here. And I'm going to drag that to where I actually want to anonymize data. So I'm going to drag it down to here. And you can see as I move it over an area, it's basically anonymizing that. I can't really see what's there anymore. It's kind of masking. I can see there is something there, which is obviously preferable to it just being a blank, but I can't actually read the data. Now, the appearance of this is controlled by these options up at the top of the dialog box. I have at the moment pixelate and blur selected. There are a couple of other options. We'll look at those in a minute. But pixelate and blur, I have two sliders in here, one for the level of pixelation and one for the level of blurring. And they're what get it to look like this. I can use either or both of these. I'll drop them both down to zero at the moment. And I can see that I've got exactly the, the, the data. It's not been affected at all. And I can drag the pixelation, and as I drag it along here, you can see that it's changing how much that's pixelated. It says pixelation radius. It's really how small those pixels are going to be. And I can drag it all the way over, and I've got a, a lot of very, very small pixels. I certainly can't see that data on there. The other slider I have is for the blurring. And here I can blur it out, and obviously it will make it blurred, so you can't really read it. But I have to get way up here before it gets to the point where I can't read that data. I'm up to 68% before it's really masking stuff out. So what I like to do is use a combination of the two. I'll blur it to some degree, maybe 34, 35% here, and then I'll add pixelation as well. And that way I can get it so that you can see that there's data in there, but you can't see exactly what that data is. So typically a, a combination of the two of those works best for me. So that's the basics of the pixelate and blur. One other feature that was added recently is you can anonymize multiple areas at the same time. So if I also want to anonymize what's in this tile here and the cash discount forecast, I can as well. I just need to drag another area with the mouse. So I'll click and I'll drag another area around that. It will use exactly the same settings. And if I decide that I don't want this one anymore, I can just delete. As long as it's selected, just press delete and it will disappear again. But here I absolutely do. So let me put that back in there. So you can do multiple areas at the same time. One last button I'll point out on the toolbar here. This preview selection button. You can see here that it will show me what's in the middle of those highlighted areas. It will show the effect applied to those. If I want to see it without the red boundary around it, so I can see exactly like the screenshot's going to look in the simulation now, I can click this preview selection button and that will effectively hide those and show me what's there. And I can see here, I've actually missed a very slight bit on the edge of it. So it's always useful to check these things. I couldn't really see that because the line was in the way, but here I'll just drag that out, recheck it. That looks a bit better to me now. So I will go with that. I'm going to click confirm here 
and that will save it and that will change the screenshot for me. So you can see here now my screenshot in my simulation will show this blurred out. Now, important to understand, this is a permanent change to these screenshots. As soon as I save this simulation and come out of the editor, it is going to be permanent. Now here, for example, I could say, yeah, that's close, but it's not really um, blurred enough. I can go back into that and I can go and change that setting slightly. I can pixelate it maybe a little bit more and confirm it. So it will make additional changes, but once I've saved it again, they are going to be permanent. I can never go back to the unanonymized version. And that's deliberately by design because you don't want an author anonymizing areas and then another author coming in later and removing those anonymizing areas and revealing that information either deliberately or inadvertently to your learners. So they are permanent changes to the screenshots. So that is Pixelate and Blur, very useful. One other feature I'll show you with this if I go down to another screenshot here. This is something I see happens a lot with less experienced authors, they'll somehow manage to capture either a hover over effect or a tooltip during the recording process. And typically I don't like that, especially not in practice mode or even in test mode because it gives the learner a very large clue on where they're supposed to click. So I want to remove this tooltip here of manage sales orders 160K. Now I could go in and edit the screenshot. There is an option on here. To the right of the thumbnail, the Replace Image button actually has an option on it for External Editor, which by default will throw you into Paint where you can edit it, or you can use the Select External Editor option to choose another external image editor, such as Snagit Editor or even Photoshop. Paint is usually sufficient. But in this case, I don't want to do that. There's an easier way of doing this using the Anonymize Screen Area functionality without having to jump out to a separate app. So I'm going to go back into my anonymized screen area function. And it remembers what I did last, as I explained earlier. I only want one of these, so I'm going to remove one of these screen areas. I'm go that's going to leave me with one. And it's this area here that I want to remove. Now, if I just put this over here, it's basically going to use the previous settings I had, which is pixelate and blur. And although it will kind of remove it, it's going to look ugly. In the actual screenshots, it's going to look like this, and it's obvious there was something there. So that's not really what I want. I want that to be like it was never there in the first place. So that's where these other options come into this. If I select this drop down here, I can select Edge Fill Color. What this does is it's going to fill that area bounded by the red box with whatever color happens to be on the outside of it. So if I select that, the edge of this is actually this gray of this screen background color. So it's going to fill the space in the middle with that same color. And now if I preview that, it looks like it was never there. Actually, you can slightly see it, but not really much. So that's a very, very good option for just being able to re remove stuff from the screen. You do need to be careful, as in this case, where there's actually a very, very slight fade. The leftmost side of the screen is a slightly darker gray to the bottom right corner, for example. There is a slight gradation on that. So you do have to watch out for that. And that's what's giving us a slight effect there. You have to look very hard to see it. During playback, a user's probably not going to notice it. But do watch out for that if you need to. If I'd actually taken a longer area here and, say, took all of that in, it would probably be a little more pronounced. You can see certainly here that it is a bit more pronounced because of that grading. So do watch out for that. But for our purposes here, that's close enough. So I'll confirm that. And now back to here, it looks like it was never there. I really can't see anything in there. So that is the edge fill color. Last couple of options I'll explain by way of another screenshot. I'll go to this one here. I've got a slight graphic on here, a little photo. Say this was really a customer logo or other information that I really didn't want to be on there. I want to remove this or anonymize this part of the image. I'm going to go in and show you a couple of options for doing that. If I drag this over here again, at the moment I've still got the edge fill color on there. So it's going to use whatever's around the edge. But if I select that, what I'll find and get it to about here so it's got that white on it. I'll go to these other options. One of them is average fill color. 
This is going to say, okay, whatever the average color is in this image, and it basically just averages out everything that's in there, fill the whole thing with a solid color of that. And in this case, if I go and look at that image, that's predominantly a browns in here, which is why when I drag this over, it's going to fill the whole thing with brown. It will fill it with a solid color. So this is kind of okay if I just want to give an idea of, yeah, there was something here, but I'm not going to let you see what it was. The other option that I have here is custom fill color. And as you'd expect, that allows you to choose what color to fill it with. So here I can say, for example, yes, let's use a nice gray there. We'll just fill the whole thing in gray. And then the user can see there was, there's supposed to be something there, but it's really grayed out. Okay, I need to extend that slightly there. So let's say I'm happy with that, confirm that, and now our image has that grayed out on it. Again, it's a permanent change to the screenshot. And that's the basic functionality with the options that you have. Pixelate and blur, edge fill, average color fill, or custom color fill. So this is all being to change a single screenshot, albeit possibly multiple areas on that same screenshot. But let's say I've got some other things going on here. If I go and look in here, in this particular case on step 13, I can see that I've got the net sales volume for this customer displayed. Now I don't want that on there. I'm gonna say that's sensitive information. I don't want this customer's current sales volume being available in training material for the life of the system. So I need to blur that out. And I notice that I've got that on this screen on step 13. It's also on step 14. And then if I go down a bit more, I've also got it on step 17, 18, and 19. It's in the same place on all of these screens, which is good because I can then mask it out on all of those screens in the same position at the same time. So I'm gonna go back up to my step 13. I'm gonna select step 13, and then I'm going to control click on the other screenshot. So here I'm in step 13. I'm gonna control click on step 14. Then I'm going to go down a bit and I'm going to take steps 17, 18 and 19. So I've now got five steps selected where this particular data appears. OK, and they're not contiguous ones. I have 13, 14, then I skip 15 and 16 and select 17. If they were contiguous, I can just click on the first one and then as per standards, I can shift click on the last one and it will select all of the ones within there. But for here, I just want those five specific screens. Now, you'll notice because I have multiple macros selected, albeit of the same type, I don't have my anonymized screen area button on the property sheet. But if I go to the tools menu under bulk changes, I'll find anonymized screen area there. So if I click that, that will throw me into the editor. Now, again, the last settings I used are selected. We'll change that in a minute. But also note, I've selected five screens, but obviously it can only show me one of those. And it's showing me the first screen I had selected. And that's fine because I know that the area I want to anonymize is in the same position on all five screens. So I only need to see one of those five screens. And it's this net sales volume here that I want to get rid of. So I'm gonna drag this over there and I'm going to go back to using the pixelate and blur. So let me drop it down a bit so I can see that there's some data in here. Maybe get it to about this. Let's say that looks good. Okay, so I can see that there's something in there, but I can't see those, those figures at all. So that all looks good, and I'm going to confirm that again. And now, if I go back to my screens, you can see that that's taken effect. I'll start with step 13, and it's blurred out on there, and it's blurred out on step 14, and if I go down to the others as well, down to, where were we, down to 17, it's blurred out, 18 and 19. Now, an interesting thing that I'll point out here, and I'll zoom in so you can see it a bit better, watch this area here, this blurred and pixelated area, as I go through these steps. So step 17 I'm currently on, step 18 it's also blurred out, step 19 it's blurred out. But you can see that the blur looks slightly different as I go through these. That's because it's applying a random blur individually to each screen as it goes through it. It's not applying exactly the same thing, but it does do it slightly different in each case. So, um, to all intents and purposes, doesn't really make much of a difference. It's still blurred out. The learner can't see what was in there. 
And that's the basic functionality. It is very useful for, again, removing sensitive data, as we've seen here, but also just for removing things like tooltips or hoverovers or things like that, where you just want to kind of remove an element from a screen because you can just fill that area in with the edge color and it'll appear like it was never there. So, hope you found that useful. If you did, please subscribe. Thank you.